Hello, it's Craig here with a breakdown for Alberts. So, what do I mean by meta maker in the thumbnail? To understand what I mean, let's start by discussing Alberts in general first. Alberts have access to piercing moves like the running attack or the backstep attack. Some even have more options due to unique move sets. Piercing attacks can do counter hit damage like other piercing weapons. They also have a fairly decent reach. While their move set isn't as fast as some of the lighter weapons. Most of their moves are not slow like heavier weapons. They also have a rare category of poise damage shared with the Reaper, otherwise known as Scythes. Two-handing the Halberd also increases your poise damage in general, like on your light attacks from 93 to 103, which breaks through the 100 poise mark, meaning your opponent must run Bull Gold's Talisman to have a chance at poising through your attack. Combined with their above average AR and their not too heavy weight, this makes Halberd a weapon class that can do many things well above average. Not all weapon classes are created equal, and the Halberd class is certainly near the top of the list because it is able to do many things well. Because of this, I call Halberds the Meta Maker, as they set a strong standard to surpass for other weapon classes. Your weapon choice requires something that performs above the Halberds in order to stand a better chance. Let's go over the Halberds ranges first. Sorry about missing this in the weapon ranges video. I'll post an updated version. Weapons within a single weapon class can have different movesets, so we can't just look at their attack rating, otherwise known as AR, without considering their distinct movesets, especially because Halberds have a selection of useful movesets when it comes to different movesets. Here is an example of their damage percent or motion values. Many motion values for halberds are actually the same, but the moves themselves are different. For movesets, let's start with light attacks. These are the regular light attacks of halberds. This is a different light attack shared by the halberd, Banished Knight's halberd, Dragon halberd, and the Commander's standard. These light attacks can be particularly good because it allows the halberds access to more piercing moves, and is slightly faster than the normal light attacks. These are another set of light attacks shared by the Guardian Sword Spear and the Loretta's War Sickle. Although you can forget about the Loretta's, I'll explain later. All these different light attacks also affect their two handed versions and their off hand attacks. Next, this is the normal and charged heavy attack of Halbert. These are the normal and charged heavy attacks of the Lucerne, Knight Rider Glaive, and Golden Halbert. The two-handed charged heavy attack of the regular halberds actually hit twice, while the special heavies hit only once. The heavy attacks for halberds are fairly slow, so these heavy attacks would mostly be a preference in PvE, as you would only use them for the rare occasional mix-up in PvP. I find the special heavy attacks a bit more useful than the regular ones in PvP, because something you do often with halberds in PvP is staggered light attacks where you continuously reset your light attack chain by moving slightly before doing your next light attack. This is a good spacing tool that also roll catches. You can use the heavy attack as a delayed attack that you can use for mix-ups, or for people rolling toward you instead of away. You can chain into the heavy attack from a light attack without needing to move. Alright, with the different movesets out of the way, let's start off with the unique halberds first, beginning with the commander's standard. The Commander's Standard is a strength scaling weapon and the longest halberd. It has a fair bit of physical AR, which works well with its piercing and light attacks, as counter hits only work with physical damage. Its unique weapon art, Rallying Standard, is quite a decent buff for PvE. This is an aura buff, so it doesn't stack with Golden Vow. It provides a stronger buff effect than Golden Vow for a shorter duration. However, one thing you might not know about Rallying Standard is it actually has a PvP modifier. I will be doing a video on all the buffs and debuffs including their PvP alterations in the future, 
so subscribe so you don't miss it. Anyway, the PvP modifier makes this buff incredibly weak, nerfing your damage boost from 20% to 2.5%, and your damage negation from 20% to 5%. Yes, you didn't read that incorrectly. While it does still provide an effect, I would probably only cast this at the very start of the fight, when you're sure you won't get hit by something else in PvP, because of how weak the buff is. Overall, you would be picking this weapon due to its length, moveset, and stats, rather than its weapon art for PvP. Next, we have the Dragon Halberd, which deals bonus damage to Dragon-type enemies. The interesting part about this weapon is, while it has the Spinning Slash weapon art, its Spinning Slash is actually unique. In addition to doing the regular Spinning Slash, this weapon art applies an extra 130 lightning damage and 80 frostbite buildup to the Dragon Halberd for 20 seconds. While I like Spinning Slash, there are actually two versions of Spinning Slash. Halberds have the version for heavier and slower weapons, which is far weaker than the quick Spinning Slash on weapons like Katanas, Straight Swords, or Curved Swords, as those are faster and do more poise damage. While you can play the Dragon Halberd as a strength weapon, it actually gets higher AR as a quality-ish weapon, meaning investing into both strength and dexterity. Next, Gargoyle's Black Halberd also has the Spinning Slash weapon art, but this is the regular version. I've provided the lower investment version and the higher investment version, so you can see that the AR is not very different, depending on your investment into either Strength or Faith. But this is the shortest Halberd by far, and its AR isn't particularly high compared to the other Halberds. You're also locked into weird requirements, like 22 Faith and the Spinning Slash weapon art. I would just run a better regular option. The Golden Halberd is also a strength based weapon that actually hosts a ridiculous amount of attack. It is split scaling, but even then, 850 AR is quite ridiculous. This thing actually deals more damage than the 80 strength heavy Knight Riders with the 70 strength and 20 faith stat distribution. And because it scales to more attributes, it means that for PvE, when you push stats even higher, this thing can host a ridiculous amount of raw damage. The only shame is a lot of endgame bosses have high holy negation. The Golden Vow Ash of War on this weapon is the same as the infusible Golden Vow Ash of War. As per usual, don't be too surprised when the wiki is wrong or missing information. The Ash of War increases your damage by 11.5% and all damage negation by 7.5%. The duration lasts 45 seconds and costs 40 FP. Like Rallying Standard though, there is a PvP modification which turns this skill into absolute garbage. In PvP, it only increases your damage by 2.5% and negation by 1.5%. This is a stark contrast to the incantation version, which retains much more of its power. I really don't understand why the PvP modifications are so inconsistent, but as far as PvP is concerned, you're basically playing without a Nash of War. <sighs> Loretta's Warsicle. Oh, Loretta's Warsicle. This has to be the most poorly designed weapon I've reviewed so far. Everything that they could possibly screw up has been screwed up. I pretty much drew an arrow to every aspect of the weapon. Let's start with the sickle name. Usually, sickle and shuttle type weapons have 40% shield pierce, but guess what? Loretta's doesn't. Next, the weapon scales to 3 stats, but it scales best to dexterity. If you take a look at the requirements, dexterity is the lowest requirement. You must invest 20 points into strength and intelligence. This weapon has both a physical portion and a magic portion, being a split scaling weapon, and yet does not have high AR. Now it is acting like a sickle, because usually sickles and shuttles have slightly lower damage since they have the shield pierce. So this weapon has relatively less AR than the other halberds but not the bonus of the shield pierce for sickles. Finally, Loretta's Slash is not a unique Ash of War. However, the Loretta Slash of Loretta's Sickle actually has a different damage calculation formula than the Ash of War version. For this unique version, you want to maximize AR, instead of investing into intelligence like the regular Loretta's Slash, which means this sickle works poorly with a mage build. To make things worse, Compare it to something like a magic glaive, which weighs exactly the same and has about the same length. You see here that a magic glaive is not only able to concentrate the investment into intelligence, you also deal more damage with the Ash of War Loretta Slash, 
versus the stat maximized dexterity Loretta Slash on Loretta's sickle. If you want the exact same moveset, we can also compare it to the Guardian Sword Spear, which actually has an even higher AR and will do slightly more damage than the Loretta Slash performed by the Magic Glaive, as Loretta Slash has a component that scales to AR. I'm sorry to say this, but the group of interns that made this weapon had to be pulling numbers out of their asses for an abomination like this to exist. I pity the Loretta cosplayers. Here is Loretta's Warsigo in its natural habitat. Pause the video to enjoy an image hunting game, because that's about the best use I can find for this weapon. Feel free to comment down below if you manage to find it. The Ripple Halberd reaches S-scaling in Arcane, and is buffable while being a unique weapon. And yes, statuses applied by Grease, for example, scale to Arcane. As you can see here, its AR isn't low at all, but we definitely need to check out multiple status creases. Since the soft cap for status scaling is at 60, you're already getting a large portion of the benefit because you should be reaching the soft cap for the Ripple Halberd. Comparatively speaking, the Blood Grease applies far less blood than Poison versus their infusion versions. Therefore, this weapon is actually better off with either the Sleep Grease, which is a really rare status effect, or the Poison Grease, which will apply poison super easily with this halberd. You do have to deal with consumables though. With the unique halberds out of the way, for the regular halberds, we have the Halberd, Banished Knight's Halberd, Lucerne, Glaive, Vulgar Militia Shotto, which does have the 40% Shield Pierce, Vulgar Militia Saw, which is the only halberd with a base status effect, Guardian's Sword Spear, Gargoyle's Halberd, Knight Rider's Glaive, and the Pest Glaive, which gives you 2% elemental negation while it is held, including being held with a two-handed trick, where you hold this weapon on one hand and two-hand your other weapon. Let's start with the Heavy Infusion. For the first page, I have the halberds with the unique movesets. The halberd and the Banished Knights have their Poke Light Attacks, the Sword Spear with its Sword Swing Light Attack, and the Lucerne and Knight Rider with their different heavy attacks. On the next page, we have the Halberds with the normal movesets, except many of these have aforementioned extra bonuses. The Shotto has the Shield Pierce bonus, the Saw has the Bleed, and the Pest Glaive has the 2% Elemental Negation bonus. You can think of the Glaive as the most standard of the Halberds. Here are their stats for AD Strength. You will notice, the Gargoyles actually has a slight AR advantage over the Knight Rider, but it has way poorer range for a puny amount of AR. I suggest just using the Knight Riders, unless you really want the regular heavy attack of Halberds. And a quick look back to Commander Standard to show that it is superior as a raw poking stick versus the Halberd and the Banished Knight in terms of AR while still being the longest Halberd. The Halberd and the Banished don't have higher AR on Keens either. Also, a quick comparison to Knight Rider to check out its raw AR potential. For Fire Infusion, I want to point out something. On Heavy Infusion, Halberd has a very small AR advantage over the Banished Knights. However, on Fire, the Banished Knights has higher AR than the Halberd. These two weapons are incredibly similar, having the same weight and stat requirement, but the Banished Knights is longer. Therefore, just pick the Banished Knight when it has higher AR. And even on Heavy Infusion, the AR difference is so small, you probably rather take the range. Nothing too out of the ordinary for the other Fire Infusions though. Their AD Strength stat looks like this, but I would really take the Heavy Infusion over the Fire at AD Strength due to split scaling, unless you're in PvE and the enemy happens to be weak to Fire. Here on Keen Infusion, some requirements are not met to standardize their stats. So think of strength requirements over 16 as extra cost. The Banished Knight has the same AR as the Halberd, so we take the Banished Knights. But the real surprising thing on this page is the Guardian Sword Spear's ridiculously high AR on Keen. Don't get misled by its A rating in Dexterity. Even though it isn't as scaling, this thing has nearly 700 AR at 56 Dexterity, completely overshadowing every other Halberd. This is not to say other halberds are bad on Keen. In fact, some scale better to dexterity than strength. I just want to point out that Keen is an exceptional option for the Sword Spear, and definitely my recommended infusion if you're playing this weapon. I want to point out that the Lucerne scales better here, 
but has overall really low AR. If you really want the heavy movesets of Knight Rider, but want to play Dexterity, this is fine I guess. But I would suggest not using this weapon either, because it is quite short and has overall low AR. These are the lightning versions. One particular weapon to note is the Guardian Sword Spear, which I want you to avoid running on lightning even at the first soft cap. Keen's AR is barely any weaker than the lightning version, meaning it will do more damage due to not having to deal with split damage. The Guardian's Sword Spear, while having a high roll on the Keen Infusion, has an atrocious dexterity scaling on the lightning version. Nothing too surprising on the second sheet. And by now, with all the options, you are probably deeply confused, cross-checking heavy and keen, so I will help you out with this table. The strength and dexterity section shows you the weapons that should be used with these stats, rather than the other way around. Here, I'll draw the lines to make the table clearer. The top half contains the 5 weapons with the different movesets, and the bottom half are the regular movesets, with many of them having other passives, like how I split the sheets. As for the vertical dividing line, it divides the weapons I marked as either, which have a small difference between the heavy or keen counterparts, but lean towards one side or another. For example, the Halberd and Banished Knights scale better on heavy, while the Militia Shotto scales better with keen. We can also sort of eliminate some of the choices. I'm using yellow crosses to signify that there can be small edge cases to using them, but they're generally not recommended by me. The Banished Knights, as previously discussed, is a better choice than Halberd. The Lucerne and Pestglaive both have low AR for the specialty they fill, which is often not worth it. And the Gargoyle's Halberd loses to the Knight Riders, unless you really care about the different heavy attack and want that tiny bit more AR. For endgame PvE, quality is great, because they're often the highest scaling pure physical damage in fusion when you can dump over 80 points into both strength and dexterity but there are no surprises at meta pvp level. This infusion is just bad at meta pvp levels, as it gives you less AR for the amount of stats you invest versus heavy or keen. Flame and sacred are two sides of the same coin. You're just picking between the elements. If you're trying to play an incantation or spell build on either flame, sacred, or magic, it is not a bad idea to use banished knights on one of these infusions as it has a faster light attack than the other Halberd versions. You can use the Halberd's high poise damage to diffuse pressure when an enemy gets too close by staggering them. Another mention would be the Pest's Glaive. While this Halberd suffers from having lower AR, if you're not really attacking with it as much and is mainly using it for the poise damage, it can be a decent consideration because it also has low weight and requirements, allowing you to more easily invest into intelligence or faith. One last mention would be the Vulgar Militia Shotto. The shield pierce on this applies to even projectile based weapon arts like Glint Blade Phalanx, which can help you more easily bust through shields, especially because it has decent scaling on flame, sacred, and magic infusion. Okay, remember this picture? Well for cold, blood, and poison, this thing doesn't really apply. You would expect the halberds in the center to sort of scale better to strength or dexterity, like their heavy or keen counterpart. But no. The vulgar militia shotto becomes extremely good at scaling to dexterity, while all but the glaive become better scaled with dexterity as well. The halberd is the strictly inferior version of banished knights in the cold section, so I will be skipping it to make space. These are the cold infusions that either invest hard into strength or dexterity. I decided to do a 45-45 for Strength Int and Dex Int, because these weapons scale better with investment into both. However, for exact amounts of investment maximization, you will need to double check, as they are case dependent. I have the resources on my Discord. For Poison, these are the Halberds that scale better to Strength, and the rest scales better to Dexterity. The particularly notable Halberd would be the Vulgar Militia Saw, as it also has Base Bleed, allowing you to get the benefit of the arcane scaling with the bleed buildup as well. For the other halberds though, you would usually prefer the blood infusion, as it is generally the better status effect. Notice how I included the normal halberd back. That is because it actually fills a different niche than the banished knights, as it scales much better to shrink for poison and blood infusion, 
So the only time I recommend it over the Banished Knights is when you're doing a Strength and Arcane Split because of other reasons, instead of a Dexterity and Arcane Split. It comes to no surprise that a cult is slightly weaker than the respective Strength or Dexterity version when it comes to AR. The only notable occult is the Vulgar Militia Saw because of its base bleed. Alright, let's do a summary for the Halberds. I really recommend watching the detailed breakdown if you skipped here, as Halberds can be quite confusing with just the summary. First, let's go through some options I don't really recommend to cut down on the number of Halberds we have to go through. The Loretta's and the Black Gargoyle are trash. Detailed explanation in their own sections. The Gargoyles is generally weaker than the Knight Rider. Only use this if you like the standard heavy attack much more than the Knight Rider's version. The Glaive is the most standardized halberd that does okay in everything, but it also means it doesn't specialize in anything. It easily gets outshined by Knight Rider for more strength oriented builds, and the Sword Spear for dexterity builds. You also have no other bonuses like the militia weapons. It is definitely still usable, but it is a jack of all trades and master of none. Next, let's take a look at the weapons with the different heavy attacks. I'm going to be placing the rest of the halberds from now on, from short to long, left to right. Meaning, the Lucerne is the shortest one out of the three, and the Knight Rider is the longest one. The Golden Halberd actually deals the most damage out of the three, even more than the Knight Rider. Assuming your target doesn't have a particularly high Holy Negation, of course. Golden Vow is really crap for PvP because of the PvP modification. Knight Rider is longer and lighter than the Golden Halberd, and also infusible with an Ash of War of your choice. These are both good strength-oriented Halberds. The Lucerne, on the other hand, does better with Dexterity. However, its low AR and short length even after factoring its lighter weight makes this weapon quite weak. I also don't recommend using the Lucerne at all. Next, the Halberds with Poking Light Attacks. The Dragon Halberd is more of a quality-ish build with a unique spinning slash that gives it a lightning and frost buff. I recommend this one more for PvE, as spinning slash has two versions, and Halberds use the slower version with less poise damage. It is still usable in PvP, but it isn't that great, especially if you take into account its shorter length. The Banished Knight is typically the infusible Halberd choice with the exception that you would use the Halberd for a Strength and Arcane stat spread for Poison and Blood Infusion. The Banished Knight is very flexible, as it is quite consistent across every infusion. The Commander Standard is a strong weapon to use for its moveset and superior reach. While the Ash of War is a stronger but shorter Golden Vow, it is still quite crap in PvP due to PvP modification. The Guardian Sword Spear is an extremely powerful keen option, reaching ridiculous levels of AR on Keen. It also has a unique slashing moveset on its light attacks. The Ripple Crescent Halberd is a unique weapon that is still buffable. Because of this, I strongly recommend running this with status greases in order to maximize its effect. For specific grease values, please check the Ripple section. As for the last three Halberds, the Militia Saw is the only Halberd with a base status effect and is a particular consideration for the Poison or Occult Infusion. Shoto has 40% Shield Pierce, and is particularly good on Magic, Flame, and Sacred Infusion. Especially because the Shield Pierce also applies to Elemental or Projectile-based weapon arts. And the Pest's Glaive grants 2% Elemental Negation, and has relatively low requirements. While I also don't really suggest this weapon, because the AR loss is often not worth a minuscule Negation bonus, it can be useful for some builds that only rarely swing the halberd for the poise damage to get enemies off you. If you have more questions, feel free to join my discord in the description. You can also join to PvP with me or help me test things out. If you liked the video, like and subscribe. Krite, signing out.